What is happening people? It is Brian Alger with NeverState.com and welcome to today's video where I want to give you guys three tips for a more stable bench press. Now the entire reason why this topic even came up is because of a guy named Miles Taylor. Now if you've been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you will know exactly who Miles Taylor is because he has been part of the Never Safe family for a lot of years now. However, many of you may have seen some of his other lifting videos because they have gone fairly viral. Now, Miles is an athlete who just so happens to have cerebral palsy and can still do some absolutely amazing things. So he's gotten to hang out with Arnold Schwarzenegger and call draft picks for the Baltimore Ravens and has even won an SB. So he's definitely been around. So maybe some of you guys have seen him in some of those avenues. Anyway, Miles and I still train together every single week. And this week, was the bench press. And if you are an athlete who is affected by cerebral palsy in the way that Miles is, then there is no greater carryover to strength than your stability. Basically, the more stable that you are, the greater foundation that you can have for generating force, and the more force you can generate equals weight on the bar. And then as we were training, I was saying, you know what? This isn't just good for Miles. It's probably something that a lot of people could hear for the first time or maybe be reminded of. So maybe I'd make a short video of it. Now, I did want to include Miles in this, because next month is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month and Miles is going to be showing up maybe within the next couple of videos doing an interview with me as a Cerebral Palsy athlete just telling people what he wants people to know and understand about CP because there is a lot of misunderstanding about what the disease actually does to people, how it affects people, how it affects people differently. So I thought it might be cool coming from one of the most recognized CP athletes out there uh, exactly what he wants everyone else to know about the disease and how it affects his life. But be looking for that within the next few weeks. For right now, let's get into point number one, which is going to be, I want you to hurt the bar. Yeah! What? I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you understand how to set up correctly, how to pack your lats, where your feet are supposed to be, how all of it is supposed to be set up. If you do not know that, then I would highly encourage that you stop watching this video. You go down to the description box and you click the link to my bench press help playlist because that will take you from the very first steps of bench press all the way through everything you need to know to bench press 500 pounds. So if that's where you're at, that's where you're at. If you're with me right now, then once you have your setup really, really good, then hurting the bar has to do with your hands. First thing is I want you to squeeze that bar as hard as you possibly can. The reason why is that your body works synergistically. So if you are actively engaging by squeezing the bar as hard as you can, then you will be able to put out more force than you would if you were just passively holding it. Now that you are squeezing that bar like it owes you money, I want you to engage it one of two other ways. Either number one, I want you to act like you are trying to rip that bar in two, or number two, I want you to act like you are trying to bend that bar like it is a horseshoe. Either way, both of those actions are going to do very similar things, which is it lock in your lats, as well as put your elbows in a more tucked and better position to not only generate force throughout the entire press, but it will keep you a lot more stable. The very last point that I mentioned about your hands, which I actually have an entire video about in that playlist below, is that most people will benefit from moving their grip in just a little bit, maybe just an inch on each side, but you'll be shocked at how much more stable and how much more horsepower you will actually get in your press if you kind of move your hands in just a little bit. The second tip that I'd like to talk about is don't be passive with your descent. Far too often, many lifters will either just let the weight come down on them or just let gravity take over and let that bar control them instead of them controlling the bar, which is the absolute opposite of what you want to do. You want to be in control of this bar from the moment that you put your hands on it until you are done as many reps as you plan on doing. In order to do so, once you do have that death grip on the barbell and you're manipulating in some sort of bendy way to put it in more pain, I want you to initiate the descent by keeping your elbows tucked and visualizing rowing this bar down to your chest and touching some point right around your nipple line. How well and in control you can lower this bar is going to have a lot to do with how well you push it back up. So take as much time as needed. Make sure those elbows are staying tucked. But once you have touched your chest, it's also important to realize that you are not going to be pushing to a line perpendicular to right above your nipple line. You're not pushing straight up. You're actually going to push to a place kind of somewhere around your eye line. Also to increase stability as well as how much weight you're actually going to be able to bench, if you were able to keep those elbows tucked during the descent, then it's actually going to have kind of a coiling of a spring type of effect because as your elbows come down, your triceps are actually going to be resting on top of your lats, which should be packed in, which means once that bar touches your chest, it's going to have a little pop out of there. Secondly, 
as it does come off your chest, I do not want you to flare your elbows outward until you're at least a couple inches away from the point that you touch. If you flare your elbows too early in the press, that's kind of your last ditch effort to put everything else that you have left into this press. And if you do it too early, then you're not gonna have what you need to finish it. So try to keep those elbows tucked a little bit longer as you come off the chest. But once you're about halfway to three quarters away, let those elbows flare, get as much horsepower into it as possible and finish it strong. And then finally, the third point that I'd like to make about being stable in the bench press is going to have to do with your breathing and bracing is very much gonna mimic what I just talked about in my overhead press video. Cause the bottom line is you're never going to be able to get as much air into your belly for your breathing and bracing when you are under load as you are without whether you are laying down on a bench or standing up for a squat or whatever the case may be. You can always manipulate kind of your air control better when you don't have a bunch of weight sitting on top of you. For that reason, I would highly recommend that you get your setup perfect, you get your grip set, and then you get your breaths, right? Get as big of a belly breath as you possibly can, and then for me personally, I hold it, I unrack the bar, and then I get either that one really big rep on that one breath, or I get as many reps as I possibly can on that first breath before I get to lock out where I rebreathe to get to more. So your breathing and bracing in this, very much like the overhead press, as I know many of you just discovered, makes a massive, massive difference in how strong you are, how stable you are in everything. So you do not want to sleep on that. If you do need more help with that, I do have a breathing and bracing help playlist that I will link in the description box down below for all of you that may need to kind of review that again. Anyway guys, that is what I do have for you today. There is probably gonna be a part two to this video where I cover leg drive, cause that is just a completely separate thing that is confusing on its own. This, I just wanna talk about a couple of the upper body things that you can absolutely do that will bring more stability into your bench. More stability means a better foundation for creating force, more force, means weight on the bar. So if you do want to be stronger, be more stable, and that begins with these points, what you're doing with your hands, what you're doing with your breath, what you're doing with your elbows, things like that. So I do hope some of you either found this as a good review or some of you heard something you've never heard before. I do thank you so much for all the ways that you guys support me, for all your patience as I've been rebuilding the website this week and everything like that. So I just thank you guys so much for absolutely everything you do. I will catch up with you later in the week, hopefully tell you a little bit more about the website and some of the changes that have happened. But until I do, go out something amazing and realize, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other, and I'll see you then.